All right, I'm here with uh, James Sackett, one of our uh, the, one of our newest professors on campus. It's been what less than two years now, right, or about that? Uh, uh, this is my third year, actually. Oh, yeah, third right? year. Yeah. Wow. No. Yeah, this is my third year. Sir, you just third finished year. your. Th you're in your third year of of right now. Yeah. Right? So two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. yeah so it's right. I was off there by a by a semester. I mean, it's because of the baseball connection. I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's but, flying by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you are in. You're one of the newer professors on campus. Um, why don't you go over a little bit about who you are? Uh, you know, like what uh, what you do here at Cornerstone, and then I guess we just covered how long you've been here. So, what exactly are you teaching here at Cornerstone? Yeah. Sure. So, uh, like Aaron said, I was hired. Uh, uh, two and a half years ago, I guess, as a full-time professor, and that's my primary role on campus. Um, as you guys will learn, I also play a, somewhat of a role in athletics, too, but uh, I am a professor of kinesiology, so exercise science, sports medicine, um, and I teach a handful of classes in, in that department. We're one of the larger departments on campus. We're housed in the, um, the new science building, which you all are probably familiar with, which is gorgeous, and uh, we have four majors, physical therapy, occupational therapy, cardiac rehab, and then just a general exercise science major. And I teach all those classes really. Um, most of my classes are the higher level classes. Um, teach like an advanced exercise physiology class, um, first aid injury prevention class when it comes to athletic injuries, uh, anatomical kinesiology class, which is like an in-depth anatomy and physiology. And then, um, Let's see what else uh, and then I teach actually some of the lower level one of the lower level classes that all the students have to take in uh, fitness and wellness so I see a lot of the students as freshmen in that too yeah. um, and then I teach the, one of the capstone classes as well for our seniors so kind of all over the place um, there's only three of us in in that department uh, me professor Williams and professor Zania and uh, we cover a handful of classes which is quite fun so um, hired in to do mainly that and then uh, after my first year of teaching here well initially I, I started off I wanted to be involved in athletics as well and that's where I, I reached out to coach Chuck and I started t uh, coaching as of last year so I didn't coach my first year but last year I did and I do as well this year so yeah. um, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that too but yeah, yeah. So that's probably where I got the two years I forgot that you were here and you weren't coaching before yep. you actually stepped into coaching. So yeah, you, you did, you joined the baseball program uh, and been an assistant coach here for the last year and a half. Uh, just what, what kind of change is that from your day-to-day -day teaching? What, what opportunities does that present to you on a daily basis? Sure, yeah. Um, some really cool opportunities. I mean, my, my whole goal of what I do is, is really based around building relationships with these, these students. Um, and I love doing that in the classroom but coaching allows me to do that out of the classroom. And that's my favorite thing about it. Um, you know, going out onto the ball field, is, is just a whole different atmosphere. Um, I see a whole different group of kids. Um, I see some of my exercise science, science students, but most of them are not actually. And so um, just get to build relationship with them, hang out with them, have some fun with them in a completely different atmosphere. You know, get to kind of take off my teaching hat um, and put on a coaching hat, I suppose, uh, literally and figuratively. And, uh, <laughs> you know, just have some fun. It, it was a different first year of coaching, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, and I'm sure it'll be a different second year of coaching as well, just because of COVID, but it's, uh, it's been incredibly fun um, just to serve alongside Chuck and Chad out there. And I look forward to more years to come with that. Yeah, it's so interesting you say it that way of like, last year, your season is in the spring. You did play some fall games. Uh, this is be the fall of 19, right? So you did get some fall games in, but then the spring just it happened, you went to spring break and then done. Yeah. Um, what, what have you taken from that learning opportunity? Cause obviously we learned a lot of things since March. What have you taken from that over the last seven to eight months that you'll carry into what we hope to have is a season in this spring? Um, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one. I mean, I learned, I learned a lot. I, I, you know, I was last year mainly just trying to learn coach Chuck's strategy and you know how I could best serve in the organization. Um, and it, it, it seemed to uh, initially, or even last year, all the way around was through uh, like external sources. It wasn't really even on the field because um, they went down to spring break for two weeks and I couldn't even go for the first week because I couldn't miss classes. Um, so I was just serving as best as I could to the guys who stayed back uh, finding ways to get connected into the community and helping, you know, our guys volunteer. So ran other random things like that, that our program does, but that's more off the field, um, yeah. you know, finding ways to 
help the kids, you know, stay up to date in the classroom because they missed a lot of classes and they typically do with our, our schedule. So it seems like that's one of my bigger roles that I play on the coaching staff and I really enjoy it, uh, but it helps me mesh athletics, academics, and obviously I'm hoping to get involved more in the coaching aspect of it, which will happen when and if we get to play. <laughs> so. We're all hoping for the best. We're, I think I it'll know. happen. It's just when it's going to happen, I'm not sure. Yeah, um, sure. But let's let's flip gears a little bit, a little personal life stuff. You've had a little bit of a change over the last few months here. Uh, you guys welcome you and your wife, welcome to baby girl into the world. Uh, what has that been like? It's been crazy. Um, the timing was was perfect. God's timing, I guess. Um, it, the, she was, she was born November 13th. Um, she was supposed to be born November 18th, which was like the last week of our semester. And so I told my students, I was like, all right, no matter what happens, we're going online for the last week, just for my wife's sake, just cause I want to be here and everything. And, um, because of the transition online last, last semester, they were all like, yeah, no problem. That'll be easy. So, um, so I tried finishing out that last week before I was going online and actually my wife went into labor as I was in the middle of that week. <laughs> so we rushed to the hospital and she was born on that Friday and then it comes down to it. I was online next week anyways, but then the governor shut us down anyway. So we were all online. So it didn't matter. And it worked out really perfectly that I could be here with my wife. Um, but yeah, lots of changes. Um, it was interesting uh, giving birth to a child in the midst of COVID, but my wife and I actually were kind of it's kind of grateful because one of the things that we've said to each other, um, which sounds kind of weird, but usually at the hospital, there's a ton of visitors. They weren't allowing visitors, but we actually really enjoyed that because it allowed us to have some quality time together with the little one. Um, and then the visitors were waiting for us when we got home uh, as much as we could at least. So, um, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's been wild, but it's been a blast. Uh, Good. Perfect timing just to spend, spend some time here with her. My wife's off. I'm off for a while now. So it's been great. That is good. That is good timing. Mean, usually when like uh, our coaches, when either them or their spouses are, are having kids, it's never good timing. It seems like it's like right in the middle of season or just when the right. recruiting gets going or whatever it is, but this is perfect. You know, you've yeah. got the next kind of month and a half before the season will get back going for the baseball guys and the semester really uh, in terms of J term and second semester. So yeah, you guys plan that out. Well, well done. Good job. It, it, yeah, like like I said, it wasn't us. It was it was God's plan, I guess. We weren't weren't even really trying to have a kid. It was just you know His plan, and it worked out. So we're super excited and grateful for that. Awesome, good stuff. All right, let's go into a little rapid fire here. Um, we'll do. Well, actually, let's do this. You coach baseball. Is baseball your favorite sport? Um, probably, probably not to play, but probably to to watch and to coach okay. and stuff like that. All right, who's your um, favorite team then? My favorite team's yeah, – I think we're going to butt heads on a lot of things here. Aaron. Okay. Um, my favorite team is the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. My youngest okay. would not agree with you. If he was down I, I, here, I he would be against you in a heartbeat. So yeah, I have I, no – I knew that. <laughs> I'm a Reds guy. I grew up in Ohio a little bit. So I love okay. the Reds. That's my, that's my hometown team. But – I'm a Tigers, definitely to support the, the new hometown team, but they've been yep. not good for so long now. It's a little frustrating. Um, yeah, but yeah sure. the Red Sox, I, I respect the Red Sox. That's been okay. one of the best franchises in baseball, right? Yep, yep, yep. So I've been a fan from the beginning, and everybody asked me why, um, because I, I grew up in the Detroit area, and uh, I don't know if I have a really great reason, but I was just a fan from the beginning, when even when they were in their World Series drought. And uh, 2000. Uh, uh, four was the best year of my life <laughs> and uh, that was when they first won it again so it's uh and I've just stuck through I just really enjoyed watching them going to visit been to Fenway several times so that's my favorite team for sure so a lot of my favorite players from that team too I remember when when COVID the first like wave the first shutdown happened back in March and April um teaching Coleman a little bit that's our youngest about he's a Yankees fan but yep. teaching him about the the history of the, the game of baseball. And the Yankees sure. obviously have the, the deepest history in terms of success. But the yeah. Red Sox and the Cubs would argue that they probably have the even more deep history, not in terms of success, but just the, the yeah. fields, the stadiums, the, yeah. the managers, the players, the people that have played. And I remember having him watch um, – the, the game seven of the 2003 ALCS when Aaron Boone hit the, the walk-off Grand Slam and yeah. – or walk-off homer. I can't remember if it was a Grand Slam or not, but it was a walk-off homer to win the game to send him to the World yeah. Series. 
and then next year, uh, the bloody sock year and the game down three to nothing and all that, and teaching him through those how special that robbery was. In the last probably 10 years, it hasn't been the same. It yeah. just, I feel like neither the Red Sox have had a little more success in terms of World Series the last 10 years, but it hasn't been the same. And I don't know why that is, but so cool to look at that rivalry and that history oh, yeah. uh, of that. Oh, yeah. So, of course. So, if you like coach or watching baseball, what do you like to play? Hockey. Hockey is my favorite sport to play. Um, I love it. I played hockey all through high school. Um, wish I never would have given it up. I gave it up for baseball in college, um, but just really, really, really enjoy it. I played a lot of drop-in hockey when I was in grad school and stuff. Um, trying to consider, considering at least building a, a rink in my backyard. I haven't done it yet, but I just love hockey. Awesome. That's cool. Uh, all right. So now we'll go into rapid fire. Um, favorite movie. Ooh, favorite movie. Um, favorite movie. Probably this is going to be out of the blue, but probably like the, the whole fast and the furious series. Mm -hmm. Um, like the car racing movies. I'm a big car guy as well. Um, I know those movies are like super fake and not real, but the Fast and the Furious uh, series, like all eight or nine of them, whatever there is now, I love those movies. That's awesome. Good stuff. Favorite TV show? TV show would probably be The Big Bang Theory. Um, big oh. science nerd, uh, obviously. And so I love that TV show. It cracks me up. I can relate to several of those guys. <laughs> yeah. Favorite place that you've ever traveled to? Hmm. Uh, probably the, let's see, probably Lake Tahoe hmm. out West, um, went out there skiing, uh, just a beautiful area. Love out West, love the mountains, the area out there. I've never been out of the country, um, which hmm. is crazy and kind of sad to say. So that's, uh, I mean, I guess, well, yeah, no, I've been, I've been to Canada, but I don't count that. So <laughs> yeah, probably Lake Tahoe. Hey, you know, Hey, it's out of the country. Yes. It's two and a half hours East, but it's out of the country. Got to get that. <laughs> Uh, it is, yeah. All right. So favorite uh, color? Uh, probably red. Red Sox. Okay. Um, favorite thing about Cornerstone not related to your teaching? What's the favorite thing about the school? Um, just the atmosphere, I think. Uh, you know, I, in my schooling, I went to three different colleges for my grad work and stuff. And um, a lot of them were bigger schools. And, you know, the, you didn't have this – small school um all of my schools didn't even have the uh, faith aspect of it and so um the atmosphere that we bring with uh, having a small school tight-knit um nice tight-knit campus and then the faith aspect all those really kind of bring a really cool thing that i really really enjoy and uh you know i plan to stay here for a while or forever because of that just because it's just it's great and that's was part of my intention in seeking out a, a school like cornerstone when i was looking for a job so i really awesome. love that Good stuff. All right, we'll end it with a serious one. I've kind of asked everybody the same question, uh, even though when it started, I thought we'd be done with this thing by now. Uh, but my question is like, what kind of message could you send to the campus and the students and the faculty and staff of just kind of the time frame that we're in, we're still in it, uh, not as much as we were back in March and April with a complete unknown of what it looked like, but what kind of message could you send just to our community at Cornerstone right now? Yeah, I think I would just continue to encourage people to stick together um, and current, continue to encourage people to trust in the science that's going on. Um, as a scientist, it's kind of disheartening to see everything that's going on nowadays that's either politically based or just misinformation because of, I don't know, people like to make stuff up about the vaccines or about whatever. Um, the science is real and the people who are doing the science behind it are incredibly intelligent. So I want um, our community to really stick together and trust those scientists and trust each other. Um, we'll get through this. We're almost there. And, uh, you know, I read a new science article every single day, a science article, not a news media article. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, we're getting close. And I'm really excited about that. And it's, uh, it's just so easy to not believe that stuff or get scared of that stuff uh, because of the fake and news and all that stuff that's being pushed. And so I think if we can just stick together and work through it and uh, keep, just keep holding on for a few more months, then we'll be there and we'll be mask free before we know it. So. Awesome. That's great stuff. Well, I appreciate you joining me today. Uh, it's been great to get to know you a little bit more. Take care of the little one. Uh, take okay. care of your wife. Um, make sure she gets some shut eye too. So. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, thanks for joining right, me. Thanks, Aaron.